time for our final award of the afternoon. And that is for this year's best musical, which goes to Renaissance. We're created to celebrate the things that make Off-Broadway special, the intimacy, the inventiveness, the intellect, the risk-taking, the originality, the fashion. So we are thrilled to present the Best Musical Award to a show that embodies all of those qualities, the transport groups, Renaissance. Dick Scanlon's, yes, <laughs> Dick Scanlon's book provides a passionate narrative on the life of Edna St. Vincent Millay, and Carmel Dean sets her poems to gloriously lush music that literally allows them to sing. It's co-directed by Dick Scanlon and Jack Cummings III, and the show produced at the Abrams Art Center pulled off a spectacular, I mean, among everything else that it does, it pulls off a spectacular coup de théâtre at the end, a reveal of what seems like an infinite space behind the playing stage with a mural of the sky tented like the one mentioned in the poem. Then, before we knew what was happening, the audience members were all on stage and immersed in an intricately structured hypnotic tone poem set to Edna St. Vincent Millay's titular masterpiece, beautifully sung and danced by the six-member cast for the enthralling finale. So, we are pleased very pleased to present the award for Best Musical to Renaissance. Here to accept, please help me welcome and congratulate Jack Cummings III, Artistic Director of the Transport, Transport Group and Co-Director, and Carmel Dean, the composer. Broadway Alliance. This is uh, an incredible honor. Um, this musical was massive in so many ways, and it really did take, as uh, most off-Broadway productions take, a village. And um, I just want to um, start with just a, a couple um, in, in very important thank yous. Um, the first one I want to make is to um, a woman um, uh, without whom the productions it wouldn't have happened. Uh, we had a lunch to, um, Lori Feynman, our executive director, I had a lunch with her to um, ask for her help. Um, we wanted an orchestra of uh, eight musicians uh, with orchestrations by Michael Starobin and, um, and beautiful copy work by Emily Grishman. We just wanted you know, we wanted Christmas, <laughs> and, um, and we met with this uh, very beautiful and courageous woman and asked for her help, and um, she said yes on the spot without knowing anything other than what we were telling her, and she's here today, and I just want to um, give her a special thanks, and that is uh, Anne Bernstein. I want to thank our incredible cast, um, who I am going to name, Jason Gote, Hannah Cornell, Michaela Bennett, Donald Weber Jr., Katie Thompson, and Danny um, Harris-Kornfeld, um, uh, who just uh, went through every phase of this very complex piece uh, with such joy and generosity. Our wonderful designers, Brett Benakis, Jen Schriever, Alistair Hostetter, and Kai Harada, um, who did just unbelievable work in bringing this piece to life. Our incredible musical director, Geraldine Anello, and her incredible musicians um, that played such a beautiful score. Um, our wonderful choreographer, Scott Rink, who when Dick and Carmona handed him, here's 20 minutes of a very complex, somewhat abstract poem that you need to stage, and they're gonna be singing in complex harmonies the whole time. He really didn't uh, blink and uh, and really shoulder that uh, miraculously. Um, and uh, our wonderful casting director, Nora Brennan, um, and uh, a very special thank you to Chris Burney, who brought this piece to us. Um, I'll never uh, forget that. It was such a joy. Um, and then the last thing I just want to say is that I, um, Dick and Carmel, who I knew very a, a, a teeny bit had both done random favors for me. You know, everyone, all Broadway nonprofit, it's just 
every day is how many favors can I ask? Between <laughs> one and five, you know, how much begging and favor asking can they do? And um, so they um, each in their own small way had done a little favor for me like in the years past. And so when they said, hey, we have this new show, will you come over um, to have us play and read through it for you? Um, which is the best way to get me to actually see something. Um, they, um, they, I said, what's it about? I said, oh, it's about the, the poetry of Edna St. Vincent Millay. And my heart sank. I was like, okay. You know, I kind of like got over as a pure favor. Uh, I'm just going to be nice. I owe it to them. I'm not going to do it. It's like, like poetry and me, like, not, never going to happen. And then Carmel sat at this piano, I remember the Ken Davenport Studios in this little room and started playing the score and within halfway through the first song, I just felt, oh this is, oh this is a voice, this is a, a real, um, beautiful, um, modern and, and classical voice that I had never quite heard before. And, um, and as it started to dawn over me, it started sinking, we may have to do this, you know. We <laughs> were thinking live in front of people without revealing a thing. Um, and so, um, and then combined with Dick's book, and it really was the story of this incredible poet who is becoming more and more forgotten, and we're trying to not let that happen. And it also, through Dick's incredible book, told her story and also told the story of the six artists actually who were telling her story. So it was quite a, an experience. So um, it's always hard doing anything that we do. I'm so moved and honored by everyone in this room, uh, looking at you, <laughs> um, and, and everyone. Um, and um, this type of, um, uh, I call it encouragement. So thank you, Off Broadway Lives, for just the encouragement because um, and, the, and the begging and favor asking that is the nature of Off Broadway. It's, it's nice to have. And with that, I'm going to give the real uh, hero of our show is uh, Carmel Bean. When Dick Scallon and I were looking for a home for our musical about the poet Edna St. Vincent Millay. We knew we had a tough sell ahead of us. <laughs> a musical about a 19-year-old girl in rural Maine 100 years ago who writes a profound 214-line poem about life, death, and rebirth. And this poem, Renaissance, set to music, would provide the epic 20-minute sung finale of the show. The piece didn't exactly scream commercial success. <laughs> And yet, when we approached Jack Collins of Transport Group, he immediately got behind our vision. He saw the relevance of us telling the story of a young female artist struggling to balance her talent with her obligation to society and to her loved ones. He saw the importance of bringing Malay's oft-forgotten words to life, which in turn allowed this female artist to bring her own musical and theatrical vision to life. And ultimately, he saw how he could help us create a transformative piece of theatre. So over the next few years, Transport Group and Jack shepherded us through the most well-thought-out, caring, and unhurried developmental process, so that when Renaissance finally came to life at the Abrams Arts Centre late last year, it was ripe to receive the most beautiful production, co-directed by Jack and Dick Scanlon, starring six singular actors with an orchestra of eight musicians playing the most stunning orchestrations by the great Michael Sterevin. There was no better home for our show. Off-Broadway theater companies provide a vital path for artists looking to tell their stories and to birth their visions in unique, artistic, and brave ways in the way that Renaissance was able to. And Dick and I are thrilled that the Off-Broadway Alliance is recognizing Transport Group for this. I am so grateful to the Alliance that my first musical as composer is being given this great honor. And to be acknowledged alongside such important, inspiring, and brilliant off-Broadway off productions this season, and to be a part of this community is truly humbling. Thank you.